and welcome back. This is the I-24 News Evening Edition. I'm Lucia Arish, and this is the Daily Debate. The Israeli military has found yet another tunnel from the Gaza Strip to Israel, which uh, they say was meant to be used to carry out attacks against Israel. Joining me tonight is Daniel Nisman, senior analyst at Max Security Solutions, and Hisham Farid. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. And Hisham Farid, uh, our Egyptian, Egyptian journalist and our I-24 News correspondent. Thank you very much for coming Welcome to busy. our studio. Welcome uh, both gentlemen and uh, I want to start right over. This is not the first time that Israel is discovering these kind of tunnels, underground tunnels. Uh, how can Israeli military put an end once and for all to this phenomenon? Well, I think that as long as we're in this uh, period where we're in between conflicts, it's a ceasefire, but in the end both sides are preparing for the next round. Um, there's nothing you can really do to stop every tunnel from being built uh, on the Gaza side, uh, other than simply go in there and reoccupy the strip, and even then you wouldn't be able to uh, to reoccupy to uh, to stop all the tunnels from being built. Um, in that sense, you basically need deterrence, combination of deterrence, uh, diplomacy, and uh, economic measures. Um, a lot of what's going on right now, the criticism is that a lot of the concrete blocks that were being used for these tunnels. Uh, or were actually being used for these tunnels, the concrete blocks that Israel actually allowed into the Gaza Strip. Um, and it's, the assessment seems to be right now in the Israeli military that, yes, this tunnel wasn't meant to be used in the near term because Hamas is still actually uh, deterred. But in the end, we see that this is actually what's preventing conflicts, not any sort of physical, tactical, military maneuvers. So, Hisham, what is exactly happening in the other side, in the Gaza Strip, uh, that actually Israel cannot control because it's not inside? Well, if you would prevent me someday to eat or drink, of course I should deal with anyone, even with the evil, to drink and to uh, to eat, to be alive. By so, saying the evil, who do you mean? Uh, no, I mean I could deal with anyone till I find my solution. Like Sadat said before, I could really check hands with the evil till I find all uh, to take back my lands once again. Mm -hmm. So, well, Gaza Strip just now, they don't have an oxygen. What does it mean, oxygen? Uh, they don't have any bridge to go out from Gaza. If anyone is has disease or ill and would like to have uh, any uh, uh, surgery operation, or someone would like to go to Mecca to ha to pray over there, or some or any student, or anyone would like to go outside to have breathe away. So what sh they should do? But we know that it's closed from the Israeli side, but it also closed from the Egyptian That's side. That's why. That's really catastrophe. So they should open. The, uh, the, the Rafah border first to make them have free, not when I prevent them to do anything. So how do they leave? That's a human rights. So I, I try to always say in everywhere that Sisi or any Egyptian president should open the Rafah border to let them have the chance to go out, to do everything, to eat, to drink, but uh, they, the tunnels, why that they do the tunnels because they don't have any solution else. Military-wise, what does it mean to open the Rafah uh, border to, between the Egyptians and the Gaza Strip? Right now, I would say n not much. Um, most of the military um, activity that took place in the Rafah border crossing was done under a network of tunnels. Um, and as, uh, as far back as Israel's last operation, it was over a thousand tunnels. Um, now, according to the UN's estimates, there are about 20 tunnels. Um, and that's because the Egyptian military has uh, embarked on an operation to create a buffer zone and destroy uh, these tunnels, literally force out people on the Egyptian side of Rafah out of their homes, filling some of these tunnels with sewage. Um, the closure of the Rafah actual uh, real crossing uh, I would say is actually more of a political move to punish Hamas as part of the effort to crack down on the, the Muslim Brotherhood movement, which of course the majority of it is in, is in uh, Egypt, but it also has an extension of course Hamas uh, in Gaza. So you have this closure uh, situation where um, Egypt is basically trying to strangle uh, the Gaza Strip uh, as punishing the Hamas uh, regime Isolating for having very Hamas. close uh, relations why? with the simply because they had very very close relationship with the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, uh, which uh, is very very hated and it's the target of a big crackdown effort by the Egyptian military, which now basically is running the new government. So let's try to connect it between what is happening in Egypt and what is happening in uh, in uh, Gaza. The Muslim Brotherhood found itself going under the ground, and the Hamas is being isolated right now from all the sides. 
How is the situation actually inside Egypt affecting what is happening right now inside Gaza? The peace agreement between Israel and Egypt said there is no any way for the Egyptian army military to go over there in Sinai. Just 19 kilometers only from the border of Canal Suez. That's all. Unless they get Israeli uh, Israeli approval. It's heaven now for the, all the Islamic fanatics uh, groups over there in Sinai just now. It's hell. Why? Because the peace agreement between Egypt and Israel uh, prevented any Egyptian military, even uh, car, military car. No, actually, I believe since, uh, since uh, the 2011 revolution uh, the Israelis have permitted a total of three uh, at least three uh, major operations operation uh, Eagle one Eagle two and Desert Storm which occurred uh, most recently and they allowed uh, uh, tanks and uh, special forces and helicopters into very close to the Israeli border really for the first time since the uh, since the peace agreement and to you even have to solve this problem in that way it's is, really wrong that I would agree with you, you but can to never say, really that I would agree with you but to say that the Israelis are not allowing the Egyptians uh, to 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 uh, clean the Sinai from from the terror haven it really has become I would say is actually the, the Egyptian fault. so w w how do you clean something and it came by the same regime the Egyptian so for regime. that I would agree with you what they what needs to be what needs to happen in the Sinai is there needs to be uh, uh, economic attention. There needs to That's be investment. Right. Uh, the Bedouin there, who have been neglected for decades, uh, need to have uh, need to be empowered. Um, it's really a decades-long problem that can't be solved with tanks and Apache helicopters. Um, but but again, I mean, I think we're highlighting the what the Egyptian uh, government needs to uh, the steps that they need to take. That this is a problem that was created decades ago, and it won't be solved uh, solved tomorrow. I'm right. trying to look at the at the case in uh, in Egypt and the case in Gaza, and I'm trying to imagine in a case where in Gaza there will happen a coup again uh, against uh, the uh, against Hamas because right now they are finding themselves in uh, the Gaza people are finding themselves in a very hard situation exactly. where and it's a disaster like you're saying so is there can we expect something like that to happen that you, they will understand that they don't want Hamas anymore you have to a control very, there? You have a very interesting situation now. Um, you have a group called Tamawud, which means uh, rebellion, that's forming in Gaza, forming mostly online. Um, they have about 50,000 members on their Facebook page, and they say they've collected 600,000 signatures. It's based off, by the way, the movement that led to the ousting of uh, Mohammed, Mohammed Morsi in Egypt. Um, now, what's very interesting, and this is where we kind of draw the Egyptian connection, is that Tamarud is connecting and cooperating with Egypt's Tamarud, which is very influential. Tamarud's most of its activities outside of Gaza are in Cairo. And uh, the Egyptian government has now taken the line that Hamas uh, that, that Fatah, not Hamas, is the legitimate representative. So you have a situation where Egypt is not using really military strength, but more kind of soft power, uh, promoting these, uh, uh, these uh, activist groups that want to topple Hamas, uh, squeezing Hamas's economy uh, from the outside. And it really leads us to kind of believe, uh, what does the Egyptian government have in store for Hamas? Is, the, is this uh, pressure on Hamas, is it a... Uh, a possibly the Egyptian government trying to to topple them from the outside who knows if you really try to make this pressure against Hamas in that way from the Israeli side Egyptian side someday you will find very huge explosion Explosion between who? But between the Israel, explosion between inside Israel and Gaza, Hamas. between Israel and Listen, Hamas, or between because right now it seems that Hamas is really afraid about what is going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians, the renewal of the peace talks, and they are finding themselves isolated, and they are seeking for reconciliation with Fatah. I, I think what he said is is absolutely right. These tunnels that leads us back to the original question. These tunnels are preparation for the explosion. Israel, uh, I think back in September, it was revealed that Israel sent a delegation to Cairo mm -hmm. saying you are pre you're going too far, you're pressuring Hamas, and they will, do, they will go back to their original state, which in the end is a militant organization. And it will be this explosion, exactly like you said. That's right. Even if I cook and there is a stream, so if I don't give any chance for this stream to go out, really in my kitchen will be explosion. So just now, really, we should don't punish the reaction. We should look for why they did the tunnels first. And later, I could solve this problem. I don't punish about million and a half million people over there in Gaza. And of course, we, we know that in a lot of money comes from Iran and from uh, Hezbollah. So uh, Gaza is not lonely now. 
a lot of uh, uh, also fanatics groups in uh, the Arabic countries and the Islamic mm -hmm. uh, countries and foundations also support them. So we can never really uh, try to, uh, uh, to, to punish all these kind of regimes. They are very strong. So that's why we should really, of course, we should stop and destroy these tunnels because it's again it's the Israeli and the Egyptian uh, secu national security. But at the same time, we should give them uh, the, the life kiss open the Rafah border for them to go and invest and to try to have some food and water and come back once again. Isn't it for Israel's benefit to open the border, to try to act to open the border? Well, because as more frustrated as a person can be, he can be more angry and he can, like we said, explode. So isn't it in Israel's benefit not to stop, because we just heard at the beginning mm -hmm. of the edition that uh, Israel is stopping the transfer of building materials to the Gaza Strip. So they're stopping building materials. They're stopping, you know, every now and then they're they're closing the Kerem Shalom mm -hmm. border. Border. So um, we're looking at a lot of closing the people. What I would say, actually, I mean, I think uh, the tunnel that actually happened was a snag in Israel's uh, a, a reformation of Israel's policy. Because what you mentioned is, yes, Israel was actually allowing border materials uh, in up until a couple of days ago. This is very, very rare. Uh, Israel had decided, dis even as Egypt as Egypt is tightening the blockade. In the way the we blockade, can say that Israel helped to build exactly. the, these but tunnels what's, but itself. But what's interesting is how did they do it? They When they allowed the concrete in, really, for the first time since 2007, they said it was organized by uh, Mahmoud Abbas from the Palestinian Authority. So they really killed two birds with one stone. They stepped in as the Israel stepped in as the good guys from the Egyptians, but at the same time, they're helping to increase the influence of their man in the West Bank, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, back into Gaza. But unfortunately, with this tunnel, there's there's no uh, legitimate way that the current government in Israel could legitimize a continuation of uh, of these uh, concrete transfers and explain to the citizens of the South, yes, we are trying to increase the influence of uh, Mahmoud Abbas, but at the end, uh, this is a real threat. We're talking about a tunnel that could have been used to deploy an entire brigade against a defenseless community. Uh, so unfortunately, with this tunnel, you hit, you hit a snag in any kind of Israeli uh, maneuvering in Gaza. With what is happening right now in Egypt, with the coup and what is happening with Mohammed Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood and Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and all this big mess, do they actually have the time, the energies, the forces to deal with Gaza? Unfortunately, yes. You said it's a mess. After one year, after we had voted for Morsi, that's the first president who comes after 60 years of the military uh, occupation uh, to Egypt, and most of people said, or 59 percent of them, they said, yes, we need that uh, president. But after uh, just eight or nine months, they said, no, we really, we, we reject the game. Yes, we respect the democracy, but according to our point of view, we don't want this person. So all these kind of fanatics groups and all the Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafi and all, all Jihad and all this kind of, who were unbeliever of the democracy, after they had heard this game is over, just now they are unbeliever. They never believe once again to uh, elect once again or to vote once again because just now they really... Um, uh, cheated them. So just now in Egypt, it's um, it's mess. That's right. So Sisi just now would like to be the president someday. Uh, since about few days, we have heard from Rust uh, organization on Facebook a very strange uh, recorded for his voice that said, uh, "Now you should." Uh, he was talking with some editors in the uh, national Egyptian newspaper. Try to encourage me to let me with uh, Egyptian people to be the president. If not, so uh, try to uh, to write something in the constitution in Egypt to protect me from any uh, cop or something else. It means he's a weak. He's weak. Before he said. Uh, yes. Well, I, I mean, in one sentence, <laughs> I would say that I mean, if uh, if there was, if does he have any challenger? Maybe Hamdin Sabahi, but who else uh, would could he challenge Sisi? They're naming sandwiches after him and putting uh, banners on the road. It seems like he's the most unchallenged uh, from from across the border, at least. It seems, uh, gentlemen, that uh, these days are, days are going to be very um, hectic and interesting in the Gaza Strip and for Hamas especially. Uh, Daniel Nisman, thank you very much thank for you. coming to our studio. And Hisham Farid, our I-24 well, News correspondent, thank you very much for coming. And uh, we're going out for a small a break, 10 minutes break, an update from our I-24 News news desk. And then we're coming back for the I-24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere. I'll be here after 10 minutes.